Take a look at these arbitrary symbols and tell me which one doesn't belong with the others. Actually scratch that, don't waste your time. Instead, take a look at these slightly more familiar, yet still arbitrary symbols. Now which one is different? Which one doesn't belong? There might be arguments for claiming that several of these symbols are the outlier, and what most of those arguments have in common is that they're totally wrong, because the correct answer is 10. Why is it 10? Because 10 is two things. Why does 10 get to be two different things when everything else is just one thing? 10 is two things because that is how we have set up our positional number system. We only use a handful of symbols to count, and when we run out we just start over. But we keep track of how many times we've started over by counting again in an adjacent position. This might seem pretty intuitive, but you probably know about a system that doesn't work like this. Roman numerals. Roman numerals are basically just fancy tally marks, which isn't a very good system because, among other disadvantages, once you start dealing with very large numbers, you end up with a very inconvenient amount of marks to write down. Our positional number system has plenty of advantages. We are often taught multiplication through the use of tables such as this one. Once we start to recognize patterns in the table, multiplication becomes much more intuitive and we can do it more quickly. For example, all multiples of 2 end in 2, 4, 6, 8, or 0, and all multiples of 5 end in either 5 or 0. My favorite pattern is that the digits of the first 10 multiples of 9 actually add up to 9. It seems like our positional number system is pretty sweet already, but what if we try to tinker with it? What if I decided to eliminate two numbers and pretend they didn't exist? Now 8 and 9 no longer exist, so we would count by saying 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 17, 20, 21, 22, and so on. Would this change anything? Would math still work? Well, it turns out that doing this does not damage the sanctity of mathematics at all. Although the numbers we use to represent quantities are different, so for example where 4 times 2 used to be 8 and 7 times 3 was 21, now we say 4 times 2 is 10 and 7 times 3 is 25. But the math is still just as consistent as ever. What we did by banishing 8 and 9 is change our base 10 number system into a base 8 number system. And all it changes is the labels. If I calculate 7 times 3 in base 8 and you calculate it in base 10, you will say the answer is 21, and I will say the answer is 25, but we will both be talking about the same quantity. Base 8 might be neat to think about, but its advantages over base 10 are questionable. But what if instead of removing two numbers from the system, I conjured up two new numbers and added them in? Now we would be in a base 12 system, and base 12 has much more apparent advantages. Start by considering a multiplication table in base 12 which is more frustrating to type out than I anticipated. In base 12, there are a few more patterns that we can take advantage of. Now multiples of 2, 3, 4, and 6 all follow repeating patterns. Additionally, my new number represented by a hash symbol follows the same pattern as the multiples of 9 in base 10, where the digits of each multiple add up to the number. Now consider the fraction 1 over 3, a commonly encountered fraction but horribly inconvenient to write out as a decimal. However, what would one-third be as a decimal in base 12? In base 12, you could write it out simply as 0.4. No repeating numbers, no ugly bars, just 0.4. In base 10, there are only two fractions you can write out using only one digit. But in base 12, there are twice as many. This is because 12 has twice as many factors as 10. The advantages of base 12 have inspired some people so much that there are actually groups dedicated to implementing this number system as a standard for society, either as a supplement to base 10 or a complete replacement altogether. Although a full switch is unlikely to occur anytime soon, alternative number systems are pretty common. Computers operate through the use of a base 2 number system, more commonly known as binary. And binary is interpreted more easily through the use of a base 16 number system, known as hexadecimal, or hex. In fact, the oldest positional number system that we have record of is a Babylonian system over 3,000 years old, and it's actually a base 60 number system. Mathematicians have also made use of a number system known as finary, which uses an irrational number, the golden ratio, as its base. If you're like me, you might find this stuff pretty exciting already, but some people are often unimpressed. They say, yeah, we get it. Numbers are an arbitrary representation of quantities. There's more than one way to do it. Move on. The reason I get so excited is because this concept is what first made me appreciate the invariance of mathematics. Something that is invariant is the same no matter how you look at it, and math is the gold standard. Let's say one day we travel to an alternate universe where everything we know about reality is flipped around. People have blue skin, subatomic particles behave differently, kale is delicious, anything can be different. 
If we met an advanced species that developed in this alternate universe, they might not agree with any scientific discovery we have ever made, but they would still be able to agree on the math. They might not agree that water is the essence of life or that blue light has a wavelength of 450 nanometers, but in whatever way they had to represent it, they would still agree with a statement like a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Math can be a breath of fresh air because it is immune from all the uncertainty in the world and alternative number systems are what first showed me that. Math is truth in the universe, and if you learn about it the right way, you should feel like the most significant thing in it. Ask a question of your own or find out more at mathematics.com.